Well, hello everyone and thank you for joining us for another webinar. We've been getting a lot of questions this week about the Farm Service Agency's Coronavirus Food Assistance Program, CFAP, and the majority of the questions that have been coming into us are specific to livestock producers. We recognize that Farm Service Agency has done a phenomenal job of rolling out tools and resources that help producers to navigate and understand this program. But we just wanted to jump on here today and take some time to kind of run through the application process and a review of the program as we understand it for the benefit of our livestock producers out there in Indian country and beyond. What is CFAP? The Coronavirus Food Assistance Program, uh, referred to as CFAP, provides vital financial assistance to producers of agricultural commodities who have suffered a 5% or greater price decline or who had losses due to market supply chain disruptions as a result of COVID-19 and may face additional significant market costs. The Coronavirus Aid, Relief and Economic Stability Act, otherwise known as the CARES Act, and the Commodity Credit Corporation, CCC, Charter Act, authorized the funds for the CFAP. USDA's Farm Service Agency and Ag Marketing Service are administering the program. Farm Service Agency is currently accepting applications for CFAP. This started on May 26 and will run through August 28, 2020. So many of our producers and YouTube channel followers may be thinking back to last week, uh, mid-May, when they were contacted by Intertribal Ag Council staff and we were advising you or offering you support in applying for some disaster assistance as a livestock ag producer. So if your question is, you know, I applied for something last week around, you know, May 20th or earlier, uh, was that CFAP? The short answer is no. CFAP recently opened on May 26th. And so you, you've likely not applied for this program yet. This is an additional disaster assistance program that's being made available to livestock producers. So don't just disregard this opportunity because it is entirely separate from what you may have uh, applied for already. CFAP is not a regular scheduled program administered by Farm Service Agency, so you will not be automatically considered for assistance. CFAP does require that the producers engage in the application process. So we wanna really make you all aware of the fact that you have to take ownership in reaching out to Farm Service Agency and indicating that you want to apply and following up through the application process. So your question might be, well, what the heck did I apply for then last week? Last week, a lot of the efforts that we led here at the Intertribal Ag Council and throughout our technical assistance network was outreach to our producers, educating them on the Small Business Administration's Economic Impact Disaster Loan, also referred to as EIDL. This disaster um, assistance opportunity is attached to a $1,000 grant advance per each employee and has the potential for a loan to be offered to the ag producer at a 3.75% interest rate made payable over 30 years with 12 months of payment deferred. This application was online at the Small Business Administration's website. We do have a video on our YouTube channel, Indian Ag, where you can refer to how to walk through this application process. We also have this video available on our website and you're always welcome to contact any of our staff here at the Intertribal Ag Council if you have questions specific to the SBA Economic Impact Disaster Loan and we'll do the best that we can to help you. We do encourage you to also contact the SBA hotline. Their number is available online as well. So this week what we're talking to you about is entirely separate than last week. This week, the Farm Service Agency opened up applications for the Coronavirus Food Assistance Program, CFAP. This program is designed to offset lost revenue on livestock sold from January 15th to April 15th, 2020. This program also offers a per head payment to producers based on their highest inventory of livestock owned between April 15th and May 14th, 2020. This video that you're currently watching will talk to livestock producers about the CFAP application process. 
who is eligible for CFAP? Eligible producers are of specified agricultural commodities who have suffered a 5% or greater price decline as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and who face substantial marketing costs for inventories. They are going to be eligible for CFAP payments through an application process, all right? The specified commodities include certain specialty crops, non-specialty crops, wool, dairy, and livestock. To be eligible for payments, a person or a legal entity must either have an average adjusted gross income of less than 900,000 for the individual tax years of 2016, 2017, and 2018, or they must derive at least 75% of their adjusted gross income from ranching, farming, or forestry. Well, since we're talking to livestock producers today, what livestock are eligible for CFAT payments? You'll see a really great breakdown of the specific eligibility that as it pertains to livestock available on farmers.gov slash CFAP. But here's some information that we pulled out. Hogs have two separate classifications in which payments will be assigned. Cattle have uh, several different classifications and sheep have one. We'll get into these a little more in depth here as we walk through some livestock producer scenarios. So now just a quick review of the timeline for the CFAP application period. Around May 19th was the announcement that the Coronavirus Food Assistance Program was gonna be rolled out and it was going to be able to reach some livestock producers. May 26, 2020, the CFAP application opened and August 28th is when the CFAP applications close. So recognize that we are encouraging you to apply as soon as you can but don't feel stress about this. You don't have to get it done emerge immediately as soon as possible, get it done by the end of the day. Take some time, get your receipts gathered, um, make sure you, un you have all of the appropriate documentation about your inventories and submit one application that is clean, that has all of the information included so that it expedites the processing of the application at the Farm Service Agency office. You have until August 28th. We don't encourage you to wait until then, but you do have that long to apply. Now let's talk a little bit more specifically about the timeline of the CFAP payments that will be calculated alongside of the applications um, which the producers are gonna be submitting. So CFAP has two separate payments, one, is payment calculations based on actual sales of livestock that were owned by January 15th, 2020 and sold before April 15th, 2020. You will see this timeline in green here on the screen. CFAT payment calculations will also be based on the highest inventory of livestock that were owned between April 16th, sorry, that should say 2020, and May 14th, 2020. So what you will notice here is it's these two time frames in purple. Again, it is April 16th, 2020 through May 14th, 2020. I do have a typo. It is not 2014, it is 2020. Here you will see that I have the timelines correct. So how do you prepare for the application? Well, first you should gather your sales receipts for any agricultural products which you sold between the window of a January 15th to April 15th, 2020. This qualifies for a CARES Act payment. Secondly, you will wanna gather inventory information for any on-hand inventory or livestock that you had for April 16th, 2020 to May 14th, 2020. All eligible agricultural producers will qualify for a payment based on their highest on-hand inventory during this time frame through a CCC payment. Next, you'll want to begin your application. Um, the Farm Service Agency's farmers.gov slash CFAP website has some phenomenal resources that will walk you through some different um, documentations and forms that you can utilize to prepare your application. We also encourage you to contact the FSA office directly after you have reviewed that website or reach out to us here at the Intertribal Ag Council and a technical assistance specialist will be incredibly happy to assist you with some of the paperwork. 
please recognize that your individual farm service agency farm profile may need some additional paperwork so that you're up to date in order to um, get qualified and applied for the CFAP application. So what are the payments? We pulled this really helpful table off of the farm service agencies farmers.gov slash CFAP website. And you can see here, they've done a very good job of breaking down the table to have livestock type broke into different eligible livestock classifications, as well as the unit of measure associated with each of the livestock and the two separate payments. Now, please consider that a livestock that qualifies will only qualify for one payment from either the CARES column or the CCC column, depending on what it was. So if we refer back to the green time frame in which you are gathering sales receipts, any livestock sale made between January 15th and April 15th will qualify for a CARES Act payment based on the sales receipts. And you will see the green column is those particular payments. Any livestock that you have on hand based on your highest inventory of livestock between April 16th and May 14th, 2020 will qualify for the CCC uh, payment rate, which you will see in the purple column. Consider that if you had a feeder cow, cattle animal that was less than 600 pounds and you sold that animal in between January 15th and April 15th, 2020, you will get a $102 payment from the CARES Act Part 1 payment rate. You will not qualify for the $33 CCC Part 2 payment rate because that animal was sold prior to April 16th and was not in your inventory in the April 16th and May 14th timeframe. Now, if you were to have a pig that weighed less than 120 pounds that you did not sell during the January 15th to April 15th timeframe, but you did have one on hand between April 16th and May 14th, you would receive the $17 payment for that animal, but not the $28 payment because you did not sell that animal during the designated time frame. So we designed some scenarios here that just create random producer profiles that we want to try to help think through some of the application process. And we did utilize the CFAP payment calculator and AD3140 14 generator provided by Farm Service Agency. So Rancher Joe sold 25 steer calves weighing 750 pounds on January 20th, 2020 at the local livestock auction. On March 10th, 2020, Rancher Joe had a 450 pound calf that he decided to sell private treaty. When he was done calving on April 15th, Rancher Joe loaded up all of his open cows and sold them at the livestock auction market. Rancher Joe worked all of his cattle on May 10th, 2020, before moving them out to summer pasture. On this day, Rancher Joe had 130 cows that had 130 calves at their side. He had 24 replacement heifers that he would be breeding for the first time this summer. He had six breeding bulls in a separate pasture. Now let's consider the different types of animals that Joe should be quantifying and preparing for in the CFAP application process. In green, I have highlighted the animals that Rancher Joe sold between January 15th and April 14th, 2020. This qualify, these animals qualify for a CARES Payment Act. I've also highlighted in purple the animals that Rancher Joe had on hand at his highest inventory between April 16th and May 15th, 2020, May 14th, 2020. 
Now, how does this plug into the cow-calf producer's CFAP application? Here is a snapshot of the CFAP payment calculator, which is a phenomenal resource that can be accessed through any computer that has Excel, and it automatically populates all of the information from this spreadsheet into the application which you will turn into Farm Service Agency. So we've input producer Joe or rancher Joe's information up top where it asks for the state and county as well as the producer's address information. And then we will scroll down to where it talks about livestock because this particular cow calf producer only has livestock. You will see part three is where you input the livestock information. Producer Joe will be able to select the drop down a uh, little triangle on the right hand side of the livestock cell to select and identify which subclass of animal he is going to be um, inputting the numbers for. So producer Joe had 25 feeder cattle that were 600 pounds or more, which he sold on January 20th. So he fills in the drop down selection menu from the first column on the left that is yellow and the calculator automatically populates the answers and, and calculates out the amounts that go in all of the cells that are colored white. The yellow cells are the ones that the producer needs to fill out and the white cells are the ones that will automatically populate by the FSA's CFAP payment calculator. So here is Rancher Joe's fully completed uh, CFAP payment calculator. So you will notice that he had 600 pounds or more of feeder cattle. There's 25 of them that sold on January 20th. That is in line one. There was one animal that was less than 600 pounds, which he sold on March 10th. That fits here, line two. And then we have all other cattle. He had 10 open cows that he sold on April 5th, which still fits here in the sales of owned inventory and any offspring from owned inventory column. And now he needs to account for the animals that he had on hand between April 16th and May 14th. Rancher Joe had 130 cows, 130 calves, 24 cows that were going to be replacement heifers or that are replacement heifers and six breeding bulls all on May 10th, which was the highest inventory which he owned between April 16th and May 14th, 2020. Now, <clears throat> for simplicity's sake, I would recognize that Farm Service Agency would probably want these columns all to be um, taken down to uh, one listing of all other cattle for highest inventory owned, but we broke them out here in this demonstration to show you how, um, the ways in which you would want to capture a count on the animals that are going to be um, considered in your CFAP application. Now another thing to point out here on the CFAP application calculator is that you'll notice to the right hand side there's this 80% estimated CARES gross payment, 80% estimated CCC gross payment, 80% estimated total CARES and CCC gross payment. So Farm Service Agency is currently accepting applications for CFAP and based on your applications, they will be reviewed and approved and payments will happen in uh, how we understand it, two separate um, chunks. First, there will be the 80% payment, uh, which is based on 80% of your approved application and then the 20% will follow if funds are available. Scenario two walks us through a sheep producer named Rancher Jessica. Rancher Jessica did not sell any livestock between January 15th and April 15th, 2020. Rancher Jessica sold 23 head of yearling lambs on April 20th, 2020. After selling the yearling lambs, Rancher Jessica still had 94 yearling lambs on the ranch. 
She also had 100 sheep that were 100 sheep that were born in 2018 and 2019 in a separate pasture on the ranch and 80 sheep that were born before 2018 on the ranch. Rancher Jessica also had four rams that were born in 2018 and 2019 and eight rams that were born before 2018. Now the reason that we've taken some time to explain when some of these sheep were born and why that matters is the CFAP application eligibility classes do have some designation of age when it comes to sheep. So Rancher Jessica did not sell any livestock between January 15th and April 15th, 2020. That means that she does not need to provide any sales receipts because she is not claiming any CFAP payments for livestock sold between that period. However, Rancher Jessica sold 23 head of yearling lambs. 94 yearling lambs were still on the ranch on April 20th and 100 sheep that were born in 2018 and 2019 were still on the ranch on April 20th. Additionally, Rancher Jessica also had four rams that were born in 2018 and 2019 on the ranch on April 20th. Now, these numbers in purple would contribute to the highest inventory of on-hand eligible livestock, which Jessica will need to consider in her CFAP application. Jessica also had some older sheep that were born before 2018 on the ranch and older rams that were born before 2018 on the ranch. And these animals do not fit within the eligible classifications of livestock as a sheep producer. So what is in red are the livestock that she will not be able to request payment for in the CFAP application. So let's start to plug in sheep producer Jessica's scenario here in the CFAP calculator. We've input her personal information up towards the top. And we've again scrolled down to part three where there's the livestock information. Here you will see that this calculator accepts formulas. If you're familiar with doing CFAP formula or Excel spreadsheet formulas, you can go in there and you can indicate that rancher Jessica had no animals sold between January 15th, 2020 and April 15th, 2020. But she did have a couple uh, groups of animals that were in her highest inventory between April 16th and May 14th, which she's going to account for in her second line here on the CFAP application, part three livestock information area. The third line here accounts for the four rams that were less than two years of age on the ranch on April 20th. Remember, in red over to the right, you will see that there were 80 sheep over two years of age and eight rams over two years of age, which do not meet the eligible livestock classifications for the CFAP payments. Therefore, rancher Jessica would not include them on the CFAP application. What she did include on the application is a total of the sheep that are less than two years of age, lambs and yearlings less than two years of age, uh, as well as the rams that were less than two years of age. And she has them uh, kind of consolidated there on the application. Then the AD3114 will need to be filled out. Now the CFAP calculator, which we used for Rancher Joe and Rancher Jessica, do a phenomenal job of actually generating this form for you if you're familiar with using Excel spreadsheets. Um, if not, by sitting down and getting the inventories and the sales receipts finely groomed through and prepared uh, to be discussed with a farm service agency or IAC technical assistant, we would be happy to help you in completing the CFAP application, which is referred to as the AD3114 or 3114 form. If you have any questions, please reach out to us today. Uh, we are more than happy to accept any sort of questions and offer help to anybody and everybody. We look forward to seeing our livestock producers taking advantage uh, in their opportunity to go ahead and apply for this uh, program. 
we recognize that this application is open all the way through to August 28th, but we really do encourage you to get your application in as soon as you can so that it can be considered uh, as soon as possible and that we give our farm service agency friends some time to work through all of the application review and administering processes. Again, you can watch more videos that will help you to understand the different disaster loan assistance programs that are available at www.indianag.org or you can follow our YouTube channel. Everybody stay safe out there, stay healthy, and if there's any way at all that we can help, please do not hesitate to reach out.